the first people to settle the Mediterranean archipelago of Malta travelled from Sicily over 7,000 years ago. Why they first came the 60 miles across the sea we don't know. Why they started to build temples and how they supported a thriving community for over a thousand years is a mystery. And what finally caused the dramatic collapse of the temple culture on Malta in prehistory lies locked in the remains of the community that rose, thrived and ultimately failed here. Small places tell us big stories. We always want more and more. Of course, restricted space is restricted space. There are limits to growth. And here on the Maltese Islands in prehistory, those limits were met. I think we can learn a great deal from that. Caroline Malone has been studying the archaeology for the last 25 years. Many of the artefacts she's unearthed are on display in the island's museums. We found at the bottom of an enormous collapsed cave system, not only a lot of buried human beings, but also some very, very important objects, and here they are. She's published books and has lectured extensively on the subject. And now, she's leading a five-year programme of research. Collectively, we've got four areas, environment, population, chronology, and archaeology. But what possible questions can she have left to ask? What we've been able to examine up to now are the temple sites of prehistory and the, a bit about the people, the burial of the people. But beyond that, we do not know the lives of those people before they died. We don't know about the economy, about the settlement, about how they extracted life from this very rocky little place. When Temi Zamit, regarded as the grandfather of Maltese archaeology, started work on the Temple of Tashin a hundred years ago, little was known about its history. It represented the first proper excavation of any temple in Malta. And even though the excavations leave a lot to be desired nowadays, they nevertheless were able to record in context and in situ many of the really important pieces of artwork. The islands of Malta and Gozo cover a few square miles, by no means a large landmass. But still, big enough if you're looking for evidence of lives lived thousands of years ago. From examination of maps and observations of the landscape, a potential site for further exploration is identified. Then, before drilling or digging begins, a technical assessment is made using ground-penetrating radar. The way I put it is that I'm a target finder, and that is that if the team are looking for a thick succession of sediments to, to drill the core, or looking for something uh, of archaeological interest, I can tell them where either of those things are. This particular site, the temple at Tel Hadi, is one the team has not visited before. But in just an hour's examination, Caroline and Alistair can see their scope for further investigation. One of the co-investigators on this project is Dr Chris Hunt, who specialises in reconstructing past ecologies through analysis of pollen and other organic matter. OK, that's it. What I'm looking for are what some of my colleagues would call an archive, basically a place where material is stored in the landscape from long ago and where it's built up in nice sensible layers that we can understand. And when you get that, then you can look into the past. Dr Hunt is leading the drilling operations to look for cores that will bring valuable records to the surface. This is the only opportunity the team will have over the next few years to drill. And that part of the process has been a resounding success. We've got some very good material. We've got a core of over 10 metres. We've got several shorter cores. And the quality looks very good. So I'm, I'm delighted because I, when I started working this way in Malta a few years back, I was told, don't bother, there's nothing there. So I'm really very happy. There's never been a more important time to tell this story. The population explosion on the island has led to a pressure on an already stretched landscape. 450,000 residents and 100,000 empty properties crowd the two inhabited islands. There's a disjoint between our small economy today and what we have inherited from the past. We look forward to, to investment from, from, uh, from European Union especially, 
but we also need to find other ways of funding restoration and conservation. Much of the prehistoric temple culture of these islands remains a mystery, but that could all change in the near future. We do know that at the end of the temple period, as we call it, about two and a half thousand years BC, it was catastrophic. They just simply walked away from those sites. They destroyed the images that they had made of these fat, godlike people, these ancestors perhaps. Why did they do that? Something went wrong. What caused that? Well, this is the great question of the project. But at the end of five years, we just might know why a civilization rose and finally failed.